hey, uh, Valentine's just passed, so I want to give a special recommendation to my personal favourite romance anime of all time, Carrie Kano. Carrie Kano is one of those shows which don't deconstruct or subvert its medium or genre, but it does something simple really well, which is constructing a narrative where the viewer is actively rooting for the two protagonists to get together. It's a show with compassion, which feels genuine, and it also really cares about its characters and their relationships to one another. And that the beating heart of the show is the need to explain why we need affection and why we need love and why love is important. This theme can only be however felt through experiencing the show yourself. So without further ado, allow me to tell you to watch Kari Kano. Kari Kano was produced by Gainax and JC Staff and was directed by Hideaki Anno, who would later work on the On Genesis Evangelion. And if that doesn't convince you to watch the show, I don't know what will. Kari Kano has an extremely simple premise. Two high school students fall in love and discover their feelings for each other over the course of 20 plus episodes. There's no body swapping, time traveling, or magic to speak of. It's simple, but that's just a part of the appeal. The narrative isn't dependent on melodrama or fantasy, which is why it makes it so interesting. The story simply makes us, the audience, experience the romance taking place between the two characters, Arima and Yukino. Throughout the show, we can easily see the relationship between Arima and Yukino bloom rapidly, and in a way which seems extremely realistic and genuine. From the start of the show, we can easily identify with the main character, Yukino and her struggles. That even though she lives a perfect and ideal teenage lifestyle, she still feels empty and shallow. Her whole life has been built up by competition and the drive to be the best. To the point where she forgets what makes her happy, and she forgets to see people as actual people. And before meeting Arima, she was obviously harboring a narcissistic personality and rarely making any friends. And one of the most interesting parts of Yukino's character arc is her letting go of her school celebrity status and becoming just as flawed and grounded like everyone else. Because what Yukino finds out is that there is no reason to be so successful if you aren't happy. We visibly see Yukino become more humanized as her relationship blooms not only with her boyfriend Arima, but with her actual friends. Not only are these turn of events tremendously gratifying, but this also tells us, the audience, that her relationship with her partner, Arima, means a lot to her and profoundly changes her for the better. Arima as a character is infinitely more intriguing than at first. His cool, calm demeanor stems from his early years of abuse and trauma, which he attempts to forget about. He simultaneously wants affection, however is too scared of his true self to act upon his emotions, because he is afraid of hurting people, especially the ones he cares about. That is why Arima in the show keeps his A grades, or clean record, because it's just a mask to hide himself from the rest of the world. And it is until he develops the courage to confess to Yukino for him to truly express himself. The most interesting part about his relationship with Yukino is that even though he is the most direct of the two, he is still extremely dependent and self-conscious about their relationship. And even though he is not the main character, we still feel this strong sense of insecurity looming over his character. Sounds familiar? What's also extremely interesting is that you can observe that Arima was the sort of prototype character for director Hideaki Anno's future protagonist, Shinji Akari, from his later work, NGE. However, Arima had an appropriately happier ending than Shinji at the end of Evangelion. As the viewer, we can observe that their relationship brings out the best for both of them, and it's this dynamic which makes their coupling feel real and makes both characters feel infinitely likeable. It causes us to actively root for them as they work through their own struggles as a relationship. What is also great about the show is that its central romance doesn't encumber the entire story. We are given enough room to see each character pursue their own goals, Yukino pursuing her own academics and Arima pursuing his kendo. It makes the characters not only feel tangible, but also multi-layered in their personality, 
that isn't to say the show is only about the relationship of Yukino and Arima. In the show, there are some relatively sweet moments about maturity, about understanding, about love, about connection, about youth. It's a show that can express all these emotions, all these feelings of growing up, without deterring from the romance in question. The palpable beating heart within the narrative is something that's really special because when talking about topics, it doesn't pull any punches. It doesn't worry about semantics. It feels real. In episode 18, there's a lingering feeling of Arima failing to physically represent his own feelings of love towards Yukina. And I'm not going to spoil the rest, but this episode not only highlights how the staff at Gainax and JC staff respect their characters, it also shows that this show means something real, that this show has the goal to do something so different, to do something so mature, to convey a relationship as detailed and as accurately as possible, down to the absolute wire. And what I think this show does really well is conveying those details by its excellent directing. Now this show obviously had a pretty tight budget, but it does a lot with its aesthetics and audio to convey emotions. Like using monochrome colours to portray feelings of abuse or sadness, or dreamlike sketches to convey moments of intimacy, panelling to show multiple detailed expressions, instrument chords to portray realisation or disappointment, pulsating reds, interesting use of imagery, and perfectly timed music cues all benefit this show into making it as interesting as possible, even on a tight budget. It goes to show that even with cost limitations, that the staff still cares about what's being put to screen and how they can be as creative as possible. And the music, engorged with its jazzy tunes, somber piano, and loud trumpets. The music doesn't just jive with the flow of the scene, it becomes the scene. It feels like the rainy nights, like the chaos of a household, like melancholic dreams. It's quiet and barely noticeable, but that is because it blends in with the emotions. It's just one of the secret, reoccurring parts of the show, which glues every moment together. But the show isn't perfect. There are some budget constraints which are really noticeable, and the show really goes to a dip after episode 18, due to creative differences between Hideaki Anno and author Masami Tsuda causing the ending of the show to be pretty rushed and definitely unsatisfying. So for most people, you want to stop at episode 18 as it's the absolute peak of the show. But even though the show is a rocky journey, it slowly becomes an emotional fountain. As we watch these characters grow and understand, we see the importance of relationships, we experience genuine emotion and creativity. It's probably everything we ever want from a romance anime. So that is why you must definitely watch Kare Kano.